Hey there, welcome to the junk drawer. My name is Enzo, and today I want to talk about She-Ra. So in addition to collecting dolls, I also collect action figures. And in that uh, action figure collection, I do collect She-Ra. So back in the 80s, <laughs> when I was a child, I would love watching She-Ra. I also loved He-Man but I was secretly more in love with She-Ra, watching the cartoons on, um, I think it was after school. I think it was a five day kind of thing back then. And I just loved, I loved the characters, the opening, every time I hear the opening of the She-Ra theme, uh, I, get, I get all kinds of nostalgic inside. So I, and I never had any She-Ra figures uh, as a kid. So um, I'm kind of, I think I want to make up for that right now uh, as an adult. Uh, I definitely had a bunch of He-Man figures. Anyway, I'm an adult, I have adult money, I can buy she-ra things if i want so i yeah like i said i decided i want to build up my collection and uh yeah this video is kind of like a show and tell i guess so in addition to she-ra i wanted to talk about galaxy girl and the guardian of the gemstones which was like a clone line to she-ra so there were a bunch of clone lines to she-ra uh way way too many to mention in this video but if you're interested in me making a video about all the clones uh let me know in the comments below but anyway uh first up let's look at my current she-ra collection so we have to start with the og she-ra herself um, I don't know if this one is complete. I feel like she might be. I'm not 100% sure. And that's that's the case for all of my figures. I'm not sure if they're complete or not. But anyway, um, this is the She-Ra figure. So they, they are more like action figures. Um, and they're more... Actually, She-Ra figures are more like an action figure combined with a doll because they do have rooted hair and it's brushable and blah, blah, blah. And they do have um, soft good uh, fashion. So the thing with She-Ra is that she also came out with a bunch of fashion packs as well because the line was aimed at girls. They were like, oh, well, we need to girl it up. So that's kind of why there's that. But uh, yeah, She-Ra is awesome. An interesting thing about She-Ra, also, I mean, this also applies to He-Man, but the action figures, don't necessarily match up to the cartoon versions of the characters. So this She-Ra is very different from the animation, the filmation version from the 80s, and also from the, the new, the new, the reboot She-Ra that recently came out. But yeah, I, I love this doll. This doll is amazing, She's super nostalgic. My favorite feature is I think her mask that when you take it off, it flips over. I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but yeah, it flips over so she can see through the mask. I don't know if that gives her extra powers or not, but I never read the uh, the mini comics or anything, so I don't know what the story is with that. But yeah, and then all the She-Ra figures have a similar kind of look to them, just like the He-Man figures have a similar vibe. I believe they all have gems in their... Um, in their chest, or not in their chest, but like on their armor. And um, very similar boots. And uh, I think they all come with weapons and they all have the, they all have hair. There are, there is at least one male figure, Bo, in this collection, which I, which I do have. And I'll show you in a second, but I think he might be the only one. I feel like all of the Shiro villains are in the Masters of the Universe line, which is like, I was thinking about that the other day and I was like, this is so weird that the villains are in another toy line. So if you're looking like, I don't know, if I was new to the Shira universe and I, I didn't know anything, I would think that all, all the characters under Shira, Princess of Power, would be in, under the same line, but they're not. So that's something that's kind of interesting and weird. And I don't know, I think of these things, these weird things all the time, so. Welcome, welcome to my brain. So like I mentioned uh, earlier, this is Bo, and that's his back. Uh, so yeah, Bo is the only male character action figure, I believe, in the line. 
And he comes with this giant bow, and he also comes with these extra arrows. He also has a cape. And he's got a cool like uh, little gimmick feature thing, I guess. So if you take his chest plate off, that you can see uh, a heart like cut out in his chest. And if you do this, I don't know if you can see that. I'm pressing a button on the back of his thing. So if I press the button, the heart kind of protrudes out so you can see it. So it looks like it's like a beating heart or something. Uh, it's it's cute. It's a cute gimmick. I, I, I don't know. It's fun. So I guess instead of a gemstone, they gave him a little working heart. I don't know. It's, it's funny. It's weird. It's cute though. So yeah, this is Bo. And then the main villain from the Horde um, or not the main villain, the main like female villain, I, I feel like, is Catra. And this is Catra, that's her back. So she also has hair. And then she also has a mask. Um, you can't flip it upside down or anything, but it's a cute little cat mask that does come off. And then she also has this like real, really interesting fuzzy kind of piece here that is removable, but it also comes with a fuzzy tail because she's a cat, <laughs> so that's fun. Um, yeah, she's cool. So this is Ketra. This is Entrapta. Um, she is in rough shape right now. When I bought her, she was like this, and I was like, oh, I can fix her up, but I still haven't, obviously. Her hair is supposed to be in like these twists, but this side is like real, real, messed up but i need to figure that out um and yeah she does uh she has this little gem in her in her little bodice right here i don't know if you can tell that or not but but i do love her because i love her her design because of the vac metal me, um wow, words vac metal her vac metal body so the shiny shiny silver is really awesome that's why i, I was kind of drawn to this figure and then the last vintage She-Ra figure I have is uh, Angela or Angelica. I don't know what her uh, official name is, but I, I called her Angelica for the longest time. And I remember her being called Angelica, but her name is Angela for some reason. But anytime I see it referenced, it's always Angela slash Angelica. So I, I don't know what her official name is, but we'll call her Angela, I guess for now. But anyway, she's a, another gimmick doll. Um, again, with the hair, but her gimmick is that her wings move. So there's a little thingy here and you press down, they go flap, flap, flap. It's very simple, but it's very fun. Um, I also love her, her outfit too. It's really pretty. Um, so she's got the gem and her skirt is like this like see-through, um, like pleated material, which is really awesome. She's just a really pretty, pretty pink action figure. And then one more She-Ra action figure uh, I have is, this is a newer one. This is, I don't remember who put this out. Oh, actually, I think I, th I think this is the Masterverse uh, She-Ra figure. So it's kind of in the same design, the same way as the OG one, but she does have the filmation sword with the little gem in the center of the sword, which is, which is awesome. But yeah, she's definitely more of like an action figure, action figure where she's like articulated. She's got joints everywhere and uh, she does have a cloth cape. Her hair is unfortunately is just plastic molded. Um, so yeah, and then she also has the sword or the, the shield. Uh, but I would consider this more of an action figure than a doll, obviously, but I still love it. So let's move on to Golden Girl. So a quick backstory on Golden Girl. Golden Girl was produced by Galoob. Um, it was produced around the same time as She-Ra. So they, I feel like Golden Girl is probably the biggest uh, clone line for She-Ra out there from what, from my very limited, <laughs> limited knowledge. Let me know if I'm wrong, but um, they definitely had the most uh, merchandise, the most dolls, um, although they only had like nine dollars or something. I think She-Ra had 20 to 30 or something like that, crazy like that. So uh, it was a much smaller line, but they pretty much matched She-Ra, except they did not have a cartoon. So, and that may have been the downfall or the, the, 
uh, the reason why they didn't last so long. Although I guess Shira also lasted the same amount of time. They were both around for about three years. So I don't know. But again, they also did fashion packs. Also, uh, they were play sets and uh, uh, things that the characters wrote on with both lines as well, which I forgot to mention with Shira. But yeah, it's, it's a very similar line where if you put them together, if you put a couple action figures together and again you didn't know the difference you would be like oh these are part of the same lines so here we have dragon queen so she is the main villain of golden girl and i believe uh there are there are, so all the all the golden girl action figures are female there are two males so one good good guy one bad guy so uh but yeah she is the main villain and I just love, I love the way she looks. I love her color scheme. I think it's pretty awesome. The pink and black and red. It's just a great color scheme. I love her hair. She's got these, uh, this weird like ponytail or a uh, split ponytail situation going. And she's got this cape, this cool cape, and it does come off. And underneath is like this black bodysuit with this like dragon motif. I don't know. She's just really cool. Like I love that she's like all in black and her face is so white and stark. It's just, I just love the contrast. And before we get to the accessories, I want to show you the box uh, that she came in. So this is the golden girl box that all the action figures came in or the, for the most part. And I just love, I love the artwork on it. It's so cool. Um, and the logo is great. Golden girl logo. And on the back of this one in particular, you can see, all the different fashion packs. So they would release, so I think because they only had so many dolls, they released fashion packs instead of more dolls. So you could like dress dress up your action figures in different outfits, um, which I think is great. I think, I think fashion packs for action figures should be a, a more normal thing. I think it's great. That way you're not repurchasing the same doll over and over, or action figure over and over again. So, yeah, and then you can see down here is uh, the one uh, castle playset. And then this is the Dragon Queen in her outfit. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you this real quick because I think it's cool. I think packaging is uh, cool, especially vintage packaging. I love it. So Dragon Queen came with a bunch of accessories. So she comes with this comb, which is amazing. I think it's supposed to be like a like a sword or a shield or something because it has like a handle. Um, I don't think she can hold it. I feel like this is like too big. So I think this is like meant for you maybe. I don't know, uh, but I just, it's so intricate and detailed. So you have the, the, the teeth on the one side and then there's this like bird kind of motif on the other side and it's this gold color. Uh, it just looks really cool. It looks like a weapon. So I think you're I think you're meant to like hold it because it's so thick. So I think it's just meant for you, but it's a really awesome, awesome accessory. And then we have this headpiece. I don't know if this was so so she came in the box very loose. So she had obviously been taken out of the box and all these accessories were kind of thrown in there. So I don't know if these are original to Dragon Queen or not, but this is what came with the, with the action figure. So that's why I'm showing them to you. But this is like a weird um, like headdress kind of piece, which is kind of cool. And then this is her armor. So this goes right over her head. Uh, it's like a dragon. Uh, situation here. It's really cool. She also comes with this, um, I'm, I'm not good with sword names, but I think this is a katana. Uh, let me, Bruce, let me know what this, uh, the name of the sword is. And then the last accessory is very strange because it's made of like die cast metal. This thing is so heavy. It is like got some serious weight to it. And it's not like any of the other accessories that are like plastic and very lightweight. So I'm not sure why this was made in this material, but it's super heavy. Um, there's the handle in the back, but yeah, it's got this like red, kind of circular outer part and then this giant green gem in the middle and these like spikes on the outside. It's re it's really cool. Um, I was just not expecting it to be so heavy and like, I don't even think that she could hold this. That's the other thing. Like it would just like 
immediately drop. So uh, cool, but weird. So yeah, that is my very small She-Ra collection and uh, my, my first Golden Girl. So if you are interested in me doing more of these types of videos about She-Ra, let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a like if you're interested in this because if you are, I would be a thousand percent happy making more She-Ra videos and kind of figuring out uh, what I need to pick or what I want to pick up from, from the She-Ra line, vintage She-Ra line. Uh, I would love to go down that road. So let me know if you're interested in that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You are amazing. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe and have a lovely, wonderful day. And I will catch you next time.